good evening and welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church in Leeds for our Christmas carol service. I'm Tim Rowe, one of the elders of the church. This service has always been a highlight of the year for me, my family and my friends. And looking out into the congregation, it's great to see people back worshipping in our sanctuary with us in person. But due to limits of capacity and some people still shielding, there are still many more who would like to be here that are unable to join us in person. To you, a very special welcome as you join us online. As we start our service, let us commit this time to worship together to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather together this evening, may you be in the centre of this joyful celebration. Thank you for sending your Son into the world, the Word made flesh for our salvation. Amen. Many members of our church will be taking part in the service tonight, which will include carols, readings and poetry, as we focus on the coming of Jesus and the hope that he brought into this world. So whether you're joining us in our church building at Headingley or toasting your toes in front of the fire at home watching this service online, welcome once again and enjoy the celebration.
To us a child is born. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honour Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boots used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
What is hope? A child's excitement of the urgent letter posted to Father Christmas, the eager enthusiasm, the impatient waiting for that special morning when hopes come true, or maybe not. What is hope? The prayers of the desperate, pleading with a, a divinity they are not sure exists, yet now they have nowhere else to turn. Prayers dictating to this unknown being their only desired outcome, which may or may not happen. Confusion compounding desperation. What is hope? It's all about tomorrow. That nations and governments will work together so that our planet has a future, our children an earth to inherit. That peoples divided by race and creed will find the desire and the humility to seek harmony and peace. That the privileged rich will provide for the poor and the not wanted. Who was it that said, with sadness in his heart, the poor you will always have with you? Hopes that rely on human selflessness and generosity often await fulfilment in vain. So what is hope? Is there such a thing worth believing in? A hope that doesn't depend on the unwrapping of presents on Christmas morning. A hope which sees into the heart of desperation and offers a peace that passes all human understanding. A hope that guarantees justice and fairness, blessing and unity, acceptance and dignity. A hope which is love guaranteed. There is such a hope, a hope called Jesus, a hope that anchors us in the arms of our God, a Jesus hope that offers sure certainty, guarantees we will never be disappointed, a hope for now and a hope forever. Jesus the only one who can promise us a hope that has already been fulfilled. The Birth of Jesus Christ This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with 
us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Father God, we come to you now as we draw near to Christmas and to the end of a very difficult year for us personally, for the nation and for the world. Forgive us for when we have sunk into despair, into believing that everything is hopeless. Now, as we draw near to Christmas, to celebrating the birth of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, we know that we can trust your promises, as Mary did all those years ago. We know that when we trust in you, we have a hope which is an anchor for our souls, firm and secure, because we know that you are with us in all things. You are Emmanuel, God with us. We also become aware of your light shining in the darkness, and that you have overcome that darkness. 
Whatever darkness there might be in our lives, we know that you have the power to drive it out. And so we come to you, giver of hope and creator of light, to pray for our nation. We pray for all those who are struggling, who may be despairing, those who are dealing with hardship, unemployment, sickness, bereavement. We pray that you will give them hope for a better future. We pray for our leaders and those leading other nations, including those involved in the Brexit negotiations, that they would make wise, humane decisions, decisions that put people first. We pray that they would bring peace where there is conflict, comfort where there is pain, justice where there is injustice, and hope where there is despair. As we look forward to 2021, to the rolling out of vaccines to protect against COVID-19, we pray that they will be made readily available to all nations, rich and poor alike, and that nothing would get in the way of this. We marvel at the skill, ingenuity and persistence of all the scientists responsible for developing the vaccines. We marvel at the hope that we now have of seeing an end to this pandemic, something which hardly seemed possible only a few short months ago. And yet we know that you are the God of the impossible, the miraculous. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us, which can overcome all things and which fuels our hope for the future. And so we thank you, Lord, for where we are now, finding ourselves looking forward to celebrating again the birth of Jesus, a most unlikely saviour, one who came in human form, knowing our every weakness, and one who would, through his death on the cross, bring us the greatest hope of all, forgiveness for our sins, a renewed relationship with God our Father, and the prospect of eternal life with you. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and ask your blessing on us all. Amen. The birth of Jesus, taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. At that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his hometown. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn.
2 from verse 8, the shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which was just as they had been told. T'was the night before Christmas, and out of his house, a boy of just four was quiet as a mouse. Not a word passed his lips as he went into care. He was going away, and he didn't know where. No curling up warm and snug in his bed, no dreams of Santa's sleigh in his little head. Nowhere to go, no filled stockings to leave, shivering in a squad car on Christmas Eve. The social worker tried her best on the phone to find them a place that he could call home. But families were busy and with no next of kin, for this Christmas child, there was no room at the inn. With nobody willing to take him, they found him instead, a hospital ward with one empty bed. But is this where we leave him for his Christmas day? Or could we together find a different way? What if the social worker still on the phone found him somewhere he could call home? A family who knew the meaning of the Christmas manger, the place where young Jesus sheltered from danger. The bed is inflated, mum and dad can sleep by the fire, an extra stocking is crudely hung up with wire. One extra place is laid at the table, one extra cracker napkin with label. The loft is raided, small trousers are pressed, and a shirt is found to fit the young guest. A small pile of gifts grow under the tree, with his name on tags like it was just meant to be. If you got the phone call, I wonder if you would offer the little boy a home for good and make him feel loved and protected from danger. Let's celebrate Christmas and welcome the stranger. such a powerful video, isn't it? And it may be something that you identify with to some degree. This has been a, a hugely tough year for many people. It's a hugely difficult Christmas. It may be that in some way you identify with the child who is spoken about in the video. It may be that it's been tough for you in a different way. In the C.S. Lewis Narnia stories, in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, one of the characters says of the mythical land of Narnia, it's always winter, but never Christmas. Perhaps that sums up how you feel. Well, the wonderful news is, the wonderful good news is that Christmas is now here. And because of that, there is hope. Just going to spend a few moments speaking about this wonderful, true, hopeful story 
of the Christ child born to us at Bethlehem. The wonderful challenge of the Christmas story, all the amazing things that we hear. And the first thing that we hear is God saying something loudly and clearly to the people in this story. We read it again and again. And I just want to pick out some Bible verses and remind us of what that something is. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. The angel says this to Zechariah, Do not be afraid. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. Mary, one of the central characters in the story, is told that although she is a virgin, she is going to be with child. And she hears the words from the angel, Do not be afraid. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. The shepherds are there on the hillside and they also hear an angel saying, Do not be afraid. And then in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, Joseph is told, surprise, surprise, do not be afraid. Whether it's Mary or Joseph, whether it is the shepherds or Zachariah, again and again in this story, God says, do not be afraid. I want to pause for a moment and just apply that to our lives today in these COVID times where there is much fear, where there is much heartache. God is saying to us through the Christmas story, do not be afraid. Not just to Mary, not just to Joseph, not just to the shepherds, not just to Zachariah, but to you and to me. God says, do not be afraid afraid. I encourage you to hear that and to receive it deeply in your hearts and lives this Christmas time. And as we unfold the Christmas story just a, a little bit more, we see why God says, do not be afraid. We see the basis for this lack of fear in the extraordinary names that are given to Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, we read that he is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Charles Wesley's hymn talks about Jesus in this way. God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man. What an extraordinary line that is, and what an extraordinary truth that this tiny baby in the manger at Bethlehem, wrapped tightly in swaddling bands, unable to clothe himself, unable to feed himself, unable to defend himself from attack. This is God himself. What grace that God comes to us in this way sharing our pain and our mess and our heartache, being born into our darkness as the light of the world. And also in Matthew's Gospel, we read that he is to be given the name Jesus, Saviour. The word Jesus or Joshua in the Hebrew means he saves and God in his grace and mercy is going to save through Jesus. The Christ child is going to grow up to become a boy, to become a man. He will live a perfect life and he will die our death on the cross, winning forgiveness for us, showing us his amazing love. And then he will rise again on the third day, the Father's Amen to Jesus' finished work on the cross. Our sins will be paid for, paid on the nail by the Lord Jesus Christ. What amazing love this is, what amazing grace this is. And the opportunity is there to receive that grace, to receive Jesus as Saviour 
and Lord. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And he is hope. And the wonderful poem that Jill Jones has shared as part of this service, we hear of Jesus and hope very much in the same breath. And it is so appropriate. A hope called Jesus. And although Jesus is not explicitly called hope in the gospel readings that we have, we can see that because he is Emmanuel, because he is God with us, he is also hope. Wonderful hope, strong hope, powerful hope, a light shining in the darkness for you and for me. And this is why we don't need to be afraid because God is with us in Jesus, because he holds out his hand for us and wants to be our saviour. He gives us hope. He gives us light in the darkness. Two ways that this can be applied to our lives. Firstly, if you have not received this light, this life, this hope, if you've not received Jesus as Saviour and Lord, there is a, a wonderful opportunity now to do so. In the very hackneyed phrase, God is for life, not just for Christmas. And if you're looking in on this because it's a special Christmas service, that's so wonderful. But don't miss out on everything else that God has for you light and life and salvation, forgiveness and freedom. Yes, the Christian life is bracing. It is a life of following Jesus through thick and thin, but it is a wonderful life and a life of great hope. Don't hold back from this. Plunge in, receive Jesus. Email me, email us, write to us. Say you want to talk further and we will get in contact with you in return. And if you've already received this hope, if you've already received this life, then live differently in the power of the Holy Spirit and share this life and hope with others. Think of practical ways that you can do this. Who knows, there might be someone listening now who is ready to welcome a stranger into their home, perhaps a, a looked after child. May God bless you if he is speaking to you in that way. But it may be that he's speaking to you in a different way, encouraging you to reach out to the poor, the marginalised, the dispossessed, encouraging you to reach out to your neighbours, your colleagues, your friends. Jesus is the light of the world and he calls on us to reflect his light to others. And so this Christmas time, let's receive, let's believe and let's share. Let's live differently and be beacons of hope in a world where there is much darkness, beacons of light shining out. May God strengthen us, may God help us, and may God bless us this Christmas time. Service is going to proceed with a wonderful choir item that focuses us on the child Jesus. And then we're going to have a final carol before Tim Rowe gives us a final blessing. But I just want to lead us in prayer now, an additional prayer, as we reflect on God's word and as we reflect on the wonderful, wonderful message of Christmas time. Let's pray together. Lord God, heavenly King, we thank you that you come to us at Christmas time, that you come as a stranger, 
that you come to a world that was hostile to you, a world full of darkness. But we praise you that you come in love and that you give us the message, do not be afraid. We want to hear those words, we want to take them deeply into our hearts and lives. And we praise you and worship you that you are Emmanuel, God with us, that you are Jesus, Saviour, and that you are wonderful, irrepressible hope. Lighten our darkness, O Lord, we pray. Pour your hope into our lives, even as we open ourselves up to you, and as we receive your love, as we receive your spirit, as we receive your salvation, we pray that we would share that life and light and hope with others. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, so meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory.
Thank you to everybody who's taken part in tonight's service. It has once again been a truly beautiful experience. In addition to those we have seen on the screen, there have been many more people who have been working hard in the background to put the service together. A big thank you to each one of them. It is very much appreciated as we could have not done this without you. Unfortunately, this year we cannot gather together after the service to drink tea or coffee and eat mince pies, but I hope that you will be able to enjoy fellowship with others in whatever way you can, wherever you are. Let's conclude our service with the blessing. May God the Father keep you in all your days. May God the Son shield you in all your ways. May God the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God the Holy Trinity drive all darkness from you and a pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. May I take this opportunity to wish you a very happy Christmas from all of us at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Leeds. <laughs>